Nice. You take that again. Kids. You don't have a pina colada in Hawaii. Hey guys, welcome to Flying Wombat TV. So we're here at the Flying Wombat Brewery. We we're all about having uh, a, a bit of a laugh and finding really fun and creative ways to make really exciting uh, beers. So myself and the guy behind the camera both have backgrounds in biotechnology and bioengineering. So we're always trying to find really cool ways to experiment in the brewery and make really fun, exciting and very unique drinks. So today we're gonna to be taking you through our brew day for a pina colada pale ale, which is one of our signature beers. So it's your classic Australian style pale ale, really fruit forward, you know, that passion fruit and tropical flavors, uh, but with a bit of a uh, coconut pineapple twist. So really trying to envision that, you know, pina colada on the beaches of the Caribbean brought into your favorite Australian style pale ale. So now enjoy the video, give us a like, and uh, we'll catch you soon. So now we're gonna talk briefly about ingredients that actually go into our beers. So what we've got here is lined up nice and pretty for you, a collection of the different ingredients that go into um, this particular batch here. So first and foremost, this little sexy chemical over here, dihydrogen monoxide, is that it's H2O, it's just water. So having really nice, clean drinking water that is not too soft and not too hard, so not too many minerals in it that's gonna uh, impede how the yeast perform, is really important to the final product in a beer. So fortunately for us in Sydney, we're blessed with having really, really good drinking water straight out of the tap. Next, we have a couple of malts. Uh, the first malt that we have here is uh, two row uh, barley. So this is just pale ale malt. So um, this is what makes up the majority of the total grains or the grain bill in our, uh, you know, in our beer um, recipes. So, uh, you know, the base malt basically gives the majority of the flavor and the vast majority of the fermentable sugars that actually turn into alcohol. So a good clean base malt to uh, kick off our beer. Next, we have a different type of specialty malt. So this is a uh, crystallized malt. So this one here is caramel. So that means that when this uh, grain went through the kiln to give it its flavor and its color, it went through at a higher temperature for a longer period of time than our, our regular pale ale malt over here. So that gives us more crystallized features. So it gives us more uh, sweetness, more toffee and caramel-like flavors on the palate. And that will help to balance our finished product because sugar and alcohol uh, are the two things that balance each other to make a really good tasting beer. Next we have another specialty malt, or you know, it's also considered a base malt, uh, is wheat malt here. So this one is not used in every single beer, but really heavily used in uh, Europe, like in uh, Germany and Belgium. So think of your, your Franciscanas, you know, your German wheat beers. That wheat is what's giving that silky smoothness to those beers. So wheat is really, really good when you want to give it a really soft mouthfeel, and you want to make it really smooth and silky. Next we have hops, so all beers use hops. Hops are the things that give you bitterness, they're the things that give you extra flavor. In this case, we're making a really tropical beer, so we're using really tropical hops. So these are El Dorado hops, and they give us a lot of really uh, pineapple-y, citrusy, uh, you know, mango, stone fruit kind of flavors on the palate. So really, really good for making really punchy, fruity beer. Uh, second to last year, we have a type of adjunct. So an adjunct is a different ingredient that's used in brewing that's not your standard ingredients. So in this case, we have coconut uh, flakes. So in this case, um, it is uh, lightly toasted coconut. So you throw this in the oven for, you know, about 10 minutes on a medium heat, something like 180 degrees Celsius. You get this light toasting going on and that's gonna help us bring that extra ca um, coconut flavor into the finished product. Just trying to give that uh, coconut a bit of a boost because this is a pina colada pale ale. And then lastly over here, I'm not gonna pick it up because it's on the stir plate, uh, we have our yeast. So this is our yeast culture that's uh, warming up here and kind of getting active and, uh, and ready to go into our tank. So yeast is super, super important in beer. It is the thing that actually ferments the sugar and gives you alcohol and gives you flavor. So selecting the right yeast, uh, yeast strain, really, really important and making sure that yeast is really healthy and active and a strong culture so that it jumps into the tank and just starts eating up all that sugar will give you a better tasting beer at the end of the day. So having something like a yeast stirrer, really good for getting this yeast active. Okay guys, so now we're in the milling stage of our brew day. So this is involving uh, basically just crushing up all of our grains so that we can actually extract the sugar out of all of those grains. So as I've said in another video, we're looking for a bit of a medium crush here. So we don't want to crush too fine where it's like powder and we don't want to crush too coarsely where it's just, you know, barely cracked. We want something kind of in the middle. If it's too fine, it's going to get stuck in the water and make a giant porridge. If it's crushed too coarsely, you're just going to lose a lot of sugar that you actually could have gotten into that finished beer. So we're looking for a nice uh, medium crush here. Ugh, so we're going to tip all of our grains. 
into the grain mill here. And then we're gonna start crushing this bad boy. And then from here, we can actually start putting this into our hot water and start brewing. I didn't plug in the grain mill. <laughs> <laughs> Blooper! <laughs> Okay, and we're back. The grain mill is plugged in. That never happened. And away we go. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a good thumbnail as well. <laughs> okay guys, so now we're ready to mash in. So mashing is when we put all of our grains into our water and that's gonna start the extraction process. So getting all the sugar out of our grains so that we can actually ferment with it and uh, get our beer. So what we've got right now is our stripe water. So that's when your water is set a couple degrees higher from what you actually want to mash at. And the reason for that is when you put your grains in, it just cools down the water a little bit. So right now we're going for a medium bodied kind of beer. So we're gonna mash in around 67 degrees. Um, and um, yeah, basically involves just using this big spanking paddle, uh, mixing paddle, to uh, make sure that all the grains are evenly distributed throughout the liquid and we get maximum extraction. So let's get into it. Satisfying? Mm. Come bring the camera in over here so you can just see what it looks like. We're basically just giving all the grain a nice big mix up, honestly. So, uh, if I can find a dough ball, oh, right here. So this is a dough ball, so if we break that open, it's all dry inside. That's why you have a, uh, a mixing paddle, so that you can get rid of all of those dough balls and make sure that all the grain is actually completely soaked by the water. Looking hot, mate. More ways than one. <laughs> all right, and of course, we've got our coconut shavings. So these are the special ingredient that makes our pina colada taste like a pina colada. So these bad boys are gonna help give us that extra boost in tropical coconut goodness. smell that. Yeah, you can really yeah, smell the coconut smells. now. So now it kind of smells like, kind of smells like a lamington at the moment, I think. Yeah. A bit like a lamington. Not many people would know that. Else oh, I mean, what, what else uses coconut shavings? Um, cakes. Cakes? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a patisserie <laughs> chef, I've got no idea. <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you doing it like that? Because that's what I'm going to be doing. No, <laughs> I, I just want you to jump in place. Oh, okay, 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 okay. okay. <laughs> Alright guys, so now we're back. We've finished the mashing stage of the brewing process and now what we're doing is loudering. So all of this liquid that's trapped in these grains, we've now lifted it up so all that liquid can drain out into the boiler, but we've still got that extra sugar that's trapped inside here. So we're gonna run our hot liquor tank, which has water at 78 degrees over top of all, that was hot, burnt my fingers, over top of all of our grains, and that's gonna get those extra sugars extracted out of the grain bed. So we're basically trying to improve our efficiency and get more beer for our buck, essentially. So, um, yeah, we'll run this through and then we'll come back to you in the boiling stage. I mean, I guess I can talk through this part a bit. So now the hot liquor tank is running the water over top of our grain bed. So we've got our filter on top, which is going to help to evenly distribute all of this, um, you know, hot water coming over top of the grains. And, uh, and yeah, all this is going to drain through and extract that extra sugar now. So you can come along and see the whirlpool. Alright guys, so now we're at the boiling step of the brewing process, so what we're going to be doing here is adding our hops. So at the start of the hour, we're going to add our bittering hops, which is a much smaller amount. That's just to give our bitterness to the beer. That's it. Next, we're going to add our uh, aroma or our flavouring hops towards the end of the boil. So in this particular case, we're going to add these at the whirlpool. I'll explain what that means a little bit later, but essentially we're going to turn the heat off, put these in, leave it whirlpooling at 80 degrees, so not boiling. I'll explain why we do that a little bit later. But for now, all we're gonna do is add the bittering hops and then we'll come back towards the end of the hour. <laughs> that 
looks so chat. <laughs> so now we've reached the end of boil and we're cooling down all of our wort. So we've got our cooling coil in here. So what we've got flowing in from this side is our cold water and then out of this side is obviously all that cold water has passed through the liquid and now it's coming out hot. So if you put your hand like, yeah, that's, that's, ow, that's really hot. <laughs> so don't touch it. <laughs> so we're basically just extracting all of the heat. We're trying to cool this down as fast as possible, but we are not cooling down to pitching temperature because what we're brewing is a little bit of a specialty beer and we want to add all of our uh, whirlpool hops and all of our coconut shavings in at 80 degrees Celsius and let it whirlpool around um, for about 20 minutes to get that extra fruity flavor out of it. So we're gonna cool this down to 80 degrees, stop the cooling, start the whirlpooling, and then we'll uh, be back with you to throw all this good stuff into the, into the mulch. Right, so now we've reached the end of our boil, so we're now whirlpooling. So we've dropped this thing down to 80 degrees, we've got this nice whirlpool going on, so now we're gonna add in all of our uh, whirlpool hops, as well as all of these uh, toasted coconut shavings that we prepared earlier. So we throw them straight into the boiler, and then that's how we're gonna extract all those super fruity tropical flavors and all of this coconutty goodness. So we just chuck them straight in here. There you go, get in the liquid. All right, so we're now in the final stages of our brew day. So all we're doing is transferring uh, the wort. So that pretty much means that we're literally just pumping all the liquid from here over into this tank over here. Um, and that's kind of it. There's not a lot to it. So, uh, yeah, that's basically it. So all like the coconut shavings and all the hops and everything are gonna get left in this tank over here. I'll have to clean that out later off camera because it's pretty gross, boring, and long. Uh, and then all of the clear liquid that's actually gonna get turned into beer is gonna get transferred over into this tank over here, which is then gonna get mixed in with all this yeast that we've had propagating over here all day long. And, uh, and that's it guys. So after that, we'll come back to you probably when we do a tasting video. Um, oh, we're probably gonna show you pitching the, uh, pitching the yeast, but after that, we'll come back to you with a tasting video and we can show you the finished product. So uh, yeah, we'll catch you soon. Finally finished the end of our brew day. All of the wort has now been transferred into our fermenter tank. All that's left is now to pitch the yeast. So these lovely guys that have been sitting there fermenting and stirring away all day long, getting nice and healthy, and are gonna go into the tank. And uh, from here, it's pretty much nothing but time. So we're gonna have to leave these uh, to do their thing for the better part of two weeks. And um, at the end of that, we'll be able to finish fermentation, start cooling this down, get it into a keg, get it on tap, and then finally we'll be able to taste it. So, uh, look, thanks for sticking with us. Uh, if I haven't said it before, give us a like, chuck us a follow, and uh, look, happy brewing. Cheers, guys.